You know, the debate was interesting because for the first hour, the moderators went out of their way not to let the candidates interact with each other. They would sometimes trade some barbs, and, and one candidate would say, I'd like to respond to that, and the moderator said no and just kept moving on. It wasn't until about an hour into the debate that Nikki Haley finally stood up and said, I keep getting attacked. I'm going to not answer your question to the, one of the moderators and instead fire back at Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy. And that then led to that heated exchange over about TikTok. Look, a lot of the debate really did have to do with China. And so, you know, you had an issue where, where the candidates were all very tough on China. But at the end of the day, I don't know that this debate really will move any of the, any of the, any of the you know, polls in any of the direction. And what you really saw that was a problem was none of them made a really convincing case as to why they would be better as the nominee for Republicans than Donald Trump. That was the first question. It set the tone and none of them cleared that hurdle. And I want to go back now. We do have that sound that I was referencing earlier and we want a courtesy NBC News. How do you get TikTok banned if you use it? Well, I, I, I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which is about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your you voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters propping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the easy scum. answer is... Ouch. Mm. Yeah, wow. That was a Will Smith moment. Keep yeah. my daughter's name <laughs> out of here. Yeah. No, but really, isn't there a, like sort of an unspoken etiquette that you're really not supposed to bring other people's families into the political debate? Yeah, well, the etiquette is gone. Yeah, and, out the window. And, 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 you know, this is what Vivek Ramaswamy, his campaign is about. It's about trying to create these viral moments. He started off the debate by attacking one of the moderators, Kristen Welker, like going after her in a repeated manner. Kristen Welker, much to her credit, just smiled, remained above the fray, and let him sort of punch his way out. Yeah. But that's the problem that you have on a stage like this is because Ron DeSantis is trying to make you know, a, a forceful case, albeit a boring one, as to why he is the best candidate. Nikki Haley is trying to throw shots as well as talk policy. And Vivek Ramaswamy is out there just trying to get clickbait, essentially, by being over the top and exaggerated and being every bit as much of the sort of, as I described earlier, the testosterone-driven, hmm. you know, fool that he can be at times. Yeah. Well, we expected it to be Haley versus DeSantis on a number of issues. Uh, and uh, uh, as Morgan Miner talked about, they both did address the issue of Israel and exactly how that should, issue should be handled. Let's listen to what uh, they had to say about that. I would be telling Bibi, finish the job once and for all with these butchers, Hamas. They're terrorists. They're massacring innocent people. They would wipe every Jew off the globe if they could. He cannot live with that threat right by his country. The Hamas should release every hostage and they should unconditionally surrender. I'm sick of hearing the media. I'm sick of hearing other people blame Israel just for defending itself. The first thing I said to him when it happened was I said, finish them finish them. And the reason is I worked on this every day when I was at the United Nations. And we have to remember that they have to, one, eliminate Hamas, two, support Israel with whatever they need, whenever they need it, and three, make sure we bring our hostages home. It's interesting because we've seen Republicans take a really hard line stance on the Israel-Hamas war, with the, ex with the exception of Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, very different than what we're seeing with the Democratic Party right now, especially the more liberal side of the Democratic Party that seems a little more torn on how to handle the issue. Will this help the Republican Party when it comes down to voting? I think it's... it's this is a comp this is one of those things that we talked about earlier in you know in the night when you have difficult situations and trying to talk about them in a comprehensive manner I, I 
to be honest with you, I don't know anyone, even within the Democratic Party, except for extremists, who are not supportive of Israel. Where the conversation gets difficult is on the way in which Israel is executing the war Absolutely. and the and the and the civilians within Gaza. And to equate sometimes the defense of civilians casualties in Gaza as being if you are supportive of, of their rights, then you must be supportive of Hamas. Right. That's where the issue gets thing. What you heard is none of that nuance tonight on the Republican side, what you heard was just strident, you know, finish the job, go in there, wipe them out. And I agree with that. But, you know, there's a nuance to this that gets lost in these debates. But I would add one thing, Jim, and, and, and the moderators didn't bring this up, is they all said how much they support Israel, but nobody said, should Israel now occupy Gaza? Should Israel be in charge of security in Gaza, which is what Netanyahu wants and what Joe Biden said he doesn't want? I yeah. didn't hear that. Absolutely. Uh, 